Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Duncan Aviation Clean Cabin Webinar. My name is Harrison Duncan, and today we will be discussing a couple different options we offer for dis disinfecting aircraft. On this webinar today, we have Rob Wayant, John Sims, Nate Clanky, Jared Stoffer, and myself from Duncan Aviation. And we have Vince Restivo from Aviation Clean Air and Martin Bobek from Aeroclave. I'll give these guys a chance to uh, go ahead and introduce themselves. Uh, Nate, would you like to start us off? Absolutely. Thanks, Harrison. Yeah, my name is Nate Clanky. I am the uh, sales manager for modifications here in Lincoln, and I've been here for 24 years and um, looking forward to uh, sharing what we're doing with our uh, disinfected processes. Absolutely. Rob? Hi, thanks, Harrison. I'm Rob Wyan. I'm in our interior department, part of our critical resource team, and I've been with Duncan for about 14 years now. Wonderful. And good afternoon. My name is John Sims, and I'm also in the critical resource team within the interior department, and I've been here 27 years. Jared? Jared Stoffer. I'm the interior manager here in Lincoln. I've been with Duncan 30 years. Uh, Ten of those years, I managed the Battle Creek uh, interior department also. Perfect. And uh, I'm Harrison Duncan. Um, my last name is not a coincidence. Um, my dad is Todd Duncan, chairman of Duncan Aviation. I'm a fourth generation Duncan working here in our marketing department right now. Um, Vince, would you also like to introduce yourself? Yep, thanks Harrison. I'm Vince Restivo, been in BizAv for about 38 years and uh, looking forward to sharing this incredible technology that is ACA Aviation Clean Air with you today. Absolutely, we're looking forward to it as well. And Martin, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Martin Bobek. I'm with Aeroclay Decontamination Systems and uh, I've been with the organization for 13, 14 years now and look forward to answering any questions you have. Perfect, outstanding. Next, um, we have a couple quick notes before we get started here. If, it, if, if at any time you guys have questions, you can send them to us by using the chat bar off, the, off to the right of your screen. If you have technical questions that will require a more in-depth answer, please email us at aircraftdisinfection at duncanaviation.arrow. We will do our best to get to as many as we can. If you have connection issues, click the reconnect button on top of your screen. Also, once this webinar has wrapped up, we will be sending out a replay link. I also want to note that everyone in the room is following the social distancing procedure and taking the proper safety precautions. Perfect. Well, and we'll also talk about a little bit here, uh, Duncan Aviation as well. Duncan Aviation is the world's largest privately owned business jet support facility. We provide business aircraft operators with every aircraft service they need yet we do so with the friendliness and responsiveness of a small town company. The Duncan Aviation name is well known and respected by manufacturers and service providers around the world. We have a strong reputation for providing premier aircraft services delivered on time for a wide variety of business aircraft at our facilities across the United States. Perfect, and we'll also share with you a brief statement from my dad, Todd Duncan, um, about what we're doing here at Duncan Aviation during this uh, odd and strange time that we're all in this together for. First, let's talk about our team members. We are educating our team members about the importance of social distancing, respiratory etiquette, proper hygiene, and not touching their hands to their face. Our facilities team is working extra hard to keep things sanitized when it comes to our facilities. And to go with our customer aircraft, at each of our three full service MRO facilities, we are disinfecting aircraft with EPA approved disinfectant, both upon, and upon arrival and again before departure, which we will discuss further in this webinar. Perfect. Awesome. Well, next we'll hand it over to uh, Vince here to talk a little bit about the uh, aero, or I'm sorry, about to uh, John Sims about uh, the Aeroclave RDS 3110. Well, thank you, Harrison. Uh, let's just talk about a little bit about the direction Duncan Aviation has taken towards aircraft disinfection. It's actually only been 73 days since the United States recognized their very first case of the COVID-19 virus. A little over a month ago, we began to see a startling trend in the spread of that disease, and we're tasked with researching potential solutions to mitigate pathogen risks for our customers and our employees while inside of an aircraft. It quickly became apparent that the virus was dictating the timeline and that finding a solution would have to be accelerated. An organized effort from multiple departments at Duncan was initiated, and we looked into various methods of disinfection, a wide array of chemicals, 
and the appropriate personal protective equipment and procedures to keep individuals safe. The EPA's end list defines the disinfectants that meet the criteria to be effective against the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19. This list has 357 known products, and we simply did not have the luxury to quickly test them all with all possible material combinations. What we needed was a tried and true system, one that would be portable, simple to operate, and would have negligible effects on the interior of the aircraft. We required a short downtime and known results that would instill confidence in our customers and our employees. One of Duncan's valued customers operates an air ambulance service in Utah with both rotary and fixed wing aircraft. They had mentioned the aeroclave fogging system and were considering purchase, purchasing the RDS 3110 unit. They obviously deal with known biohazards on a daily basis, and we added this unit to our research list and eventually obtained a unit for testing. The system already had a proven track record in high stakes medical environments. However, we wanted to see how the unit performed in a business aircraft cabin. The brand name of the solution used in the aeroclave is Vital Oxide. So we began some preliminary testing on numerous samples of carpets, fabrics, leathers, and finished veneers. We also had the benefit of an unairworthy large cabin business jet on the ramp that allows us numerous applications for the interior for testing. It became apparent the aqueous fogging approach enveloped all of the cabin. The mist appeared to adhere both horizontal and vertical surfaces and reached the nooks and crannies of the aircraft. With the appropriate application duration, the flight decks have no visible accumulation of the solution, and I would consider them to be dry after application. At this point, we've used the Aeroclave unit over 100 times in the Lincoln facility, and we'll have multiple units in operation at Duncan's Lincoln, Battle Creek, and Provo locations by next week. We also have additional units that will be shipping to many of our satellite locations in the near future. Uh, and uh, Rob, would you like to elaborate on our actual application process? Absolutely. Thanks, John. So the use of the Aeroclave machine itself is basically it's three steps. Start to finish our process here at Duncan is really a five-step process, taking into account the variety and sensitivity of some of the surfaces and equipment that we encounter on aircraft. Our first step, protection and preparation. As Harrison mentioned earlier, Duncan's top priority is the safety of its people, its facilities, and the aircraft that we service. So that starts with our personal protective equipment, you know, the ap applicator dons PPE head to toe prior to entering into the aircraft, keeping the technician, his family, coworkers, community all safe. <clears throat> Once inside, we identify any materials or equipment that may require extra care during the disinfection process. And we protect those surfaces or equipment accordingly. We then want to position everything in the aircraft to allow the vital oxide to permeate into any areas possible open up cabinets, doors and drawers, compartments, position seats, headrests and armrests in a manner that allow that vital oxide to get where we want it to go. Second step of that would be the injection phase. The aeroclave is set to run for a predetermined length of time based on the aircraft's cabin volume. Once the aeroclave shuts down, we then use the hand applicator to spray the disinfectant to any areas that were not exposed during that initial application. Typically areas like the baggage compartments, toilet seat lids, pocket doors, seat belts, that kind of thing. We also use that hand applicator in the cockpits due to the sensitivity of the equipment. Third step would be the dwell phase, and this might be the most critical step. The vital oxide has a 10 minute dwell time, meaning from the end of its application, it sits on the surface for a minimum of 10 minutes to, to do the disinfection process. Fourth step would be the aeration phase. Open up the cabin, your baggage doors, create airflow, allow any remaining fog to dissipate and any surface moisture to dry. The fifth step would be our details phase. Uh, this last step isn't just exclusive to the disinfection process. We perform it on all of our aircraft just prior to delivery. It's a full on wipe down in detail of your cabinetry, your seats, your windows, cockpits, vacuum all the carpets, brush out any suede or fabrics. Our marketing team has put together a little video that kind of highlights this, how this unit works. Let's take a look. Well, thank you both for those great insights and uh, the video turned out great. Um, we hope everyone was able to see the video as well. We were running into a few technical difficulties. So if you missed the video, um, please refer to our website or to um, our YouTube channel as well. Um, next, we will actually uh, hand it on over to uh, Vince Restivo to discuss the aircraft clean air purification system. Vince, would you like to go right ahead? 
Thank you, Harrison, and welcome, everybody. Uh, we'll talk just a little bit about Aviation Clean Air, ACA. Uh, ACA is a revolutionary new proactive air and surface purification system, and we, we call it proactive because ACA is not a filter. Filters require the, the uh, pathogen, biological, VOC, whatever it is you're trying to clean to get to the filter and through the filter. And ACA is very proactive in that the methodology of cleaning the air is anywhere the air is distributed in the cabin cockpit of an aircraft, ACA is effective by virtue of the fact that we are generating ions, which we'll talk about in just a minute, and we're using the aircraft's um, air conditioning system to distribute these ions throughout the cabin and cockpit and again, cabin uh, baggage compartment uh, for effectivity. ACA neutralizes uh, pathogens, gases, odors, and it also uh, reduces static electricity. So uh, ACA um, works by creating positive and negative ions. It's, it's technically called bipolar cold plasma needle point ionization. Uh, there won't be a test on that later. Uh, just remember that it creates positive and negative ions. And the ions, are, as I said, are distributed throughout the cabin using the aircraft's air conditioning uh, system and uh, ECS system for distribution. What happens is the ions <clears throat> cluster around the, uh, the uh, biologicals and they go after uh, the hydrogen bond and disassemble the hydrogen bond, which creates basically an inert version <clears throat> of some elements that are no longer the, pathologic, the, the, the pathogen or biological. So as a result, it's, it, it, it is no longer able to reproduce, it'll quickly die, and it is um, no longer a threat to humans. There was a study done a while ago by a major university in the States where they actually did a test on board an, an aircraft, in this case an airliner, and they introduced pathogens. And they found that these, uh, I, I like to call them bad actors, can stay alive on surfaces in aircraft for, for several days, and in some cases throughout their testing up to a week. So ACA is uh, pretty simple in, uh, in the installation and in fact in the maintenance side. Uh, there is no schedule maintenance, it's on condition, uh, completely uh, maintenance free unless there is some sort of a issue with the device. Uh, to this point in time, there have been zero failures in service. It's a very high MTBF. Uh, there are no consumables to maintain or repair. There's no filters to clean. It's just completely on condition. And ACA's green technology, it makes it, or uses no chemicals. It cleans the air exactly the way nature does. If you're ever at the ocean or in the mountains and you notice that fresh air, <clears throat> that's simply a con higher concentration of ions in the air. And that's how nature cleans the air. And that's how ACA cleans your air, not only freshens against odors, but as I said earlier, also attacks and eliminates pathogens, viruses, and VOCs. So there's a, this next slide has a couple of pictures. The one on the lower left shows the unit installed. Basically, it's a very simple installation where it's mounted, as I mentioned earlier, to the uh, environmental control system, ducts, bleed air, if you will, uh, but downstream of that, typically in the condition side. And it uses the cabin airflow or the aircraft cabin airflow to distribute the ions throughout the interior. There's no fans, no filters, no additional air handling equipment, nothing at all. When the air cycle machine's running, whether APU generated driven or aircraft engine driven, you're being protected. 100% uh, of the time, those ions are being populated throughout uh, throughout the cabin. Also, it's easy it's easy installation from a certification perspective. Uh, ACA do, does hold uh, STCs on several airframes, and uh, it has been installed on numerous occasions via field approval 337, et cetera. So it's a very minor uh, modification as far as the installation complexity is concerned from a regulatory perspective. And lastly, uh, as I said, ACA replicates the same process found in nature. Here's a list of some of the benefits and the, um, the, the uh, I, again, I call them bad actors, biologicals, odors, uh, that ACA is effective against. And as far as coronavirus and Ebola, <clears throat> ACA has not been physically tested against those two yet. Uh, but I will tell you that the science behind what the what makes the ions work and what makes ACA effective 
uh, and the analysis by our uh, team indicates clearly that the molecular structure of the coronavirus and Ebola are very, very similar to uh, viruses and that has uh, ACA has been proven to kill. We have a very, very high confidence that ACA will be very effective against coronavirus and Ebola virus, uh, and certainly a uh, significant amount of testing proving on all these other items that are listed here on this list. So, so uh, with that, Harrison, I'm going to turn it back over to you and uh, available for any questions should there be any. Perfect. Thanks again, Vince, for the insight. And uh, once again, folks, I'm reading in the uh, chat on the side. We do apologize about the video and uh, please access that video on our website. Um, it's going to be some more great insight. And uh, before we close and get into questions here, let's talk a little bit more about Duncan Aviation and what we have to offer you as our customers. Um, we have three full service MRO facilities, one in Lincoln, Nebraska, one in Battle Creek, Michigan, and another brand new facility in Provo, Utah. On top of that, we have 27 avionics satellite shops across the United States. Then on top of that as well, we also have our workaway engine locations and rapid response engine locations that are there to help you when you need us most through those AOG events. Perfect. And we'll move on to our next slide here as well. We also have these following services as well. We have our aircraft sales and acquisitions. We have airframe maintenance, avionics installations, components repairs, engine and APU work, AOG emergency services, engineering and certification, paint and interior services, as well as parts and rotable sales. Wonderful. So thanks again, folks, for listening. Um, we will get into the questions here. Um, we first want to also say that uh, if you do want to contact any one of us with any of those detailed oriented questions, um, please contact aircraft disinfection at duncanaviation.com. Also, Vince and Martin are great resources. You can reach them with those email addresses as well. And so on to the questions. Perfect. So I just wanted, this is Nate Klinky. I wanted to uh, address a few of the things that uh, I've been seeing in the, in the text lines there. Uh, first of all, and I'll have Vince uh, join in as well. One of the questions was about what airframes the ACA system were certified on. And um, Vince, I believe right now the uh, STC is available on the Gulfstream G550, 455, 650, and 650ER. Um, is that correct? That is correct on the Gulfstream product line, correct. And then um, as Duncan is partnering with Aviation Clean Air, we're also evaluating some other airframes that um, we are going to create some additional STCs. So our engineering group and uh, ODA are evaluating a different aircraft and uh, we'll hopefully be able to bring a few more um, certification pass STCs to the market for some other aircraft or this uh, onboard installed uh, system from ACA. And, and Nate, could I just add to that, that there are several installations, numerous installations of the ACA system on aircraft with a 337 or field approval. So an STC isn't the only path. Uh, it has been installed, uh, EASA considered it a minor, uh, it's been installed uh, uh, on other airframes via these other other paths. So there's there's multiple paths, and as Nate said, Duncan is working uh, now to figure out the best path forward to get make available to you all as quick as possible. All right, thank you, Vince. Another question that came in was regarding avionics and the uh, fogging, the aeroclave, and the uh, vital oxide that's used to do the fogging, and. Um, Rob uh, and I have been chatting here and talking about the, how we handle that and um, some concerns that avionics manufacturers may have with uh, its impact on the avionics. And, and we are considerate of that. We're trying to do uh, the very best job we can do to not only uh, disinfect the areas, but also be considerate of those um, pieces of equipment. So we are doing very light um, uh, treatment of those areas. And of course, we're not having the equipment on during the treatment so that there's no um, chemical or no treatment that's being ingested or pulled into avi uh, avionics through um, fans or cooling fans or any of the uh, ship side fans. So uh, we are conscious of that. We want to make sure that we're not uh, creating any additional problems, but we do want to make sure that we are uh, protecting uh, the people that are going into the aircraft and, and interfacing with those systems. And that's one of the benefits of the hand applicator that comes with the aeroclade machine is you can set it up so that it runs on its own toward the aft of the cabin and then you reserve that cockpit forward cabin area 
for the hand applicator. So you can really be very controlled how much you actually put into that area for those reasons. Great. Thanks, Rob. One thing I would add from the uh, aeroclave perspective is that um, if you have any uh, manufacturers, I've, I, I've, I've received the feedback before around the, uh, the concern with the avionics, um, but I have not received any feedback, uh, specific feedback in terms of what the specific concerns are. Um, so we're all always available if you have a point that wants to talk specifically about um, uh, the product, uh, the chemical, the process. Um, I'd encourage you to uh, uh, give them my contact information. We'd be happy to go through it. I saw another question up here about the size of aircraft that can be treated and uh, how small or how large the aircraft can, can be. And um, I think the, the answer to that is probably, you know, with the smaller aircraft, it may be something that, uh, you know, the hand unit would be best served for. So it could be it could, it could go down to a small single engine airplane by using that system. Um, in some cases, it might be easier to do a wipe down in those cases. On the other end of the spectrum, when you get into a large aircraft, because, um, and Martin, you might be able to help uh, talk about the, the area of coverage that those units do, but I know there's a, a top end of kind of square foot that it will cover, I think about 5,000 square feet. So if you have an airplane, uh, BBJ and ABJ, a large uh, wide body, there might be multiple systems that need to be set up inside the aircraft to do that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And it's important to think about the process in, in, in terms of volume as opposed to uh, cubic feet. And um, when you're, if you ever have a chance to look at the system directly, everything is based on, on cubic feet. And the, uh, the single cycle capacity of the 3110 system um, is, uh, as you mentioned, uh, 5,000 cubic feet. And um, so that really accommodates uh, fair, fairly readily most of private jets. Um, but we have been in discussion with Boeing as an example um, in terms of how to you know, use multiple systems in conjunction with each other or comp compartmentalizing uh, larger areas and things of that nature. Um, but, it, but it's quite simple. It, it's, it's purely a, uh, an evaluation of uh, cubic footage and then uh, uh, following the, the instructions uh, relative to the uh, cubic footages and um, the time inputs in the system and uh, hitting the start button. Um, it's, it's, it's very straightforward. This is Jared. There was a question on, on there about the uh, negligible effect and uh, wanted to speak to that. Uh, we've, we've done a lot of internal testing, of course, understanding this has been a um, short time, but we've also done a lot of research on uh, information Martin provided us. We've done our own internal. We had a boneyard aircraft, basically, that we had here that, that uh, we were able to experiment on in quite a bit, uh, really dialing in the dosages, which is, is really critical to this. Um, I would, you know, we really do not see any effect other than there's a small residue that, that is left uh, that in our final delivery, we do a, a final cleaning. Um, that's... Uh, Anything to add, Rob? Yeah, you know, what, what, from what our testing did, we didn't even notice any effects when we were really, I mean, we were pouring puddles of the solution onto gross points and leathers and fabrics and that kind of thing, which is obviously way more than you would get with the misting machine. And I think the worst we saw out of that was the, the salt treatment, the flame treatment that was on the gross point. There left a little bit of a ring on the backside. Um, and so I think the testing went very well. We also did flammability testing determine any adverse effects that it might have on your fabrics, your leathers, and we noticed no no difference there whatsoever. So really we, we kind of put it into worst case scenarios. And, right. and I think any caveats out there are really along the lines of go in the plane and you know pour a bucket. And, and we certainly in no way are doing that. It's right. a misting effect and uh, you know, we're, we're confident in results. There's a comment on uh, how long does it take for before you can enter the aircraft now we're looking at it from a duncan perspective about a 30 minute uh phase to clean out the basically let the cabin aerate and uh obviously that's going to depend on whether it's inside or outside uh, i think the reality is it's probably 
far less than that, but 30 minutes is the time frame that we have chosen. You want to talk about uh, the impact to the person applying it? It's very low. They, do you have the numbers to talk to that? Do you have the STS sheet? For uh, the, yeah, the STS sheet is actually zero across the board. Right. Yeah, they no no inhalant irritation, no skin irritation, that kind of thing. Um, obviously, here at Duncan, as an extra measure, we do make sure that we're at least wearing respirators and suits and that kind of thing, mostly for contact to the virus. But EPA category four rating for all exposure routes, with the exception of mild eye irritation. Right. There's a comment on soft goods, uh, microfibers, and ultra suede. Uh, Using the recommended duration, I would say that it would basically be imperceptible to your eye, the, the actual residue. So we do not wipe down any of the soft goods. With the exception of ultra leather. You know, things like Correct. ultra leather and leathers, we would. But you're, you're If there is excesses, more, yeah. Suede, yeah, we just give those a brush through as we would any other pre-delivery preparation. That you, you mentioned excessive moisture. What we've done is in our testing of the Boneyard aircraft, we were able to really, along with the recommendations from Martin's group, we were able to dial in, you know, what, how long to avoid that excessive moisture. Absolutely. We tailored, you know, the Aeroclip comes with a recommended runtime for your, for your cubic feet of volume. Um, we use that Boneyard aircraft to kind of dial that number in a little more specifically tailored to the shape of an aircraft. I saw a question on here about how large. Can you answer that? How large an aircraft? How small an aircraft? So I think probably the smallest we've done yet would have been one of the Duncan planes. And that was small enough that we did not use the 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 system in the airplane. We hand wanded that one. So really the, the answer is we can do any because of the wand. Absolutely. We use the wand instead of the... The typical installation. Correct. And while you're on the size of the aircraft, I, I think there was a question or two about um, size of aircraft and sizing of the ACA system. And uh, the way the ACA system sizing works, it also can be used on virtually any aircraft. Uh, units very small, installations very simple. We size the quantity of units to the volume size of the cabin of the aircraft uh, such that we achieve the uh, uh, ion density that we know we're looking for to achieve positive results. Vince, as a follow-on to that, there was a question I noticed about whether the ACA system cleared both airborne and um, surface pathogens. Yeah, and as I, it does, in fact, as I mentioned uh, in my in my briefing, uh, the unique thing about the ions is that they're everywhere the air goes in the cabin, so they're virtually everywhere. So, uh, as I'd mentioned, there's a university here in the states that did a study and proved that pathogens actually stay alive on surfaces. Uh, up to some cases up to a week, most three, four days, several days. And it, it, anywhere there's air distributed in the cabin, ACA is effective in the air and on surfaces. And there's a, a question about the satellite shops and their training and absolutely the all of the satellite personnel that will be using the uh, Aeroclave and Vital Oxide product will have uh, prior training to actually using the, uh, the machine in the aircraft. And you mentioned we hope to have at least some of the satellites with equipment this coming week. Absolutely, all uh, all of the major uh, facilities will have uh, multiple machines, and then the satellite machines should uh, probably be receiving some of their uh, equipment starting next week. Oh. Yeah. So currently, uh, we have uh, five satellites that will will have the uh, aeroclave units next week. And, and eventually, with our next batch of units, those will be doled out uh, to those satellites, the additional satellites. You know, the other thing I, I, I you know, since how we're talking about treatments and times and what have you, uh, the thing about aviation clean air is that once it's installed in the aircraft, it is always cleaning. It's not a separate event or, or requirement. So um, there's certainly uh, really valid reasons and, and needs for uh, ground-based cleaning as well. Uh, many aircraft don't have this system on board, and I, I, I certainly agree with that. Uh, ground-based cleaning is something that ACA is very well aware of. 
uh, and participates in. But the airborne, once it's installed, is is uh, one of the questions I thought was uh, I saw was, you know, how often or what have you. But with the ACA, once it's installed and running, it's always cleaning. There's no other period or uh, cleaning required. Yeah, that's a great point. I thought that was uh, one of the nice things as we were putting together this presentation is that we were uh, going to be talking about two um, different systems that accomplish the same thing essentially. And, and um, you know, there are a lot of options out there. And as we've been doing our homework about uh, how to um, address the, the concerns with the coronavirus, how to address aircraft that may have known contamination and aircraft that, that uh, just want to have the um, cabin clean and, and make sure that, um, that they don't have any problems. So um, it's really interesting uh, with the differences between the two where one's a you know, physical application of a, of a product and the other one uh, happens more at an ionic level uh, continuously. So uh, great point that you know, one is long-term, one is um, a point of, a point of uh, treatment product. And uh, I saw another one in there, uh, if you don't mind, um, Nate, I'll just jump in on it um, about uh, ozone. And um, one of the un very unique features of aviation clean air is the, the science behind the ionization or the ion creation is that it doesn't create any ozone. Uh, and that's one of the things that is, is protected under one of the um, multiple patents that ACA uh, has gained. So it's a very unique in that regard, and it does not add ozone um, to an aircraft, as some uh, have asked. Well, that was an interesting question that came up there. If passenger gets on board, the uh, ACA system could neutralize the virus and is on their clothes and hands, etc. So, um, yeah, again, one of those things that. Um, I think that Vince has emphasized a couple of times with the ACA system is the fact that it is every every space, everything that air touches in the cabin, well, that's running from when you go out to the ramp to get the airplane going with the APU and start running that system and, and then all the way in flight, everything in there during that time while passenger in there is actually being disinfected at that time. You're exactly right, Nate, and that's one of the reasons right off the top I stress that it's not a filter. Filters are great at what they do, but let's say in a Gulf Stream, uh, we know that air is introduced throughout the cabin, but we also know the outflow valve is in the forward part of the airframe. And so uh, a filter, uh, which would be installed uh, on any given aircraft uh, toward the introduction of air, uh, let's say it at the aft of the cabin for the sake of generalities, anybody uh, that is sitting, let's say in the aft cabin of the aircraft on, again, a, a, an airframe that has an outflow valve forward and introduces some sort of uh, biological or pathogen, everybody in that cabin that is forward of that person or said another way between that person and the outflow valve could be subjected to an airborne version depending on how they brought it on and what they brought on. And uh, with a filter, there's just not a filter between you and, and that path with ACA of course, you're, you're cleaning the air everywhere and the surfaces. So you're protected person to person, left to right, in front of you, wherever, again, everywhere the air goes. So yes, good point. Thanks, Vince. I've seen uh, quite a few questions about um, different costing, different airframe sizes, different airframes. And um, if you have a question related to an airframe and the cost, please send us an email so that we can contact you directly to talk about those things. So we can understand uh, your situation and and which system is uh, might be right for you and and uh, how we can help there. So um, we we'll send those to that to aircraft disinfectant at duncanaviation.com and uh, we'll we'll address all of those requests. There's a question on there about uh, wipe down. Uh, does it require a wipe down? Um, in in theory, it doesn't, but it does leave. You know, there is an appearance, and so. Uh, we we figure into uh, when the, when the aircraft are here at Duncan, we do do a final wipe down on them, which uh, removes that. Nate, if I could, there was another one in there about the power consumption of ACA, and uh, the ACA is uh, very very low power. It's only 150 milliamps of DC. Okay. 
Martin, I think you had a, a comment you were going to make. Well, I was just going to say regarding wipe down, I noticed there were a couple questions about that. Um, so uh, vital oxide's about 98% uh, water. So if you were to introduce uh, water uh, on the surface, then obviously over time you will get some accumulation. But generally speaking, you won't get a, a, an accumulation any more than what you would expect with water. It's a little more because there is obviously some other components there other than uh, uh, H2O. Uh, but it but it won't be significant and um, based on what Duncan does it's actually very similar to what folks do uh, in the hospital settings or say for the back of an ambulance there's always a regular cleaning process underway um, gross decon and and just regular cleaning and and, uh, and scrubbing so so generally speaking just in terms of following your standard operating procedure procedures for cleaning you won't see a significant accumulation of vital oxide specifically That sounds right, Martin. We have not noticed a real a, a buildup or a, a real visible film. What we probably noticed anything on the most was just a light streaking on, say, cabinetry, which you would get, you know, if you clean your cabinets with a 409 or something like that. It's it's not that high polished look that you would typically have when you wipe them down with a, you know, a final inspection type cleaner. I was going to say it's, it's, it's more for the appearance. Right. I mean, there, there might be some slight streaking. Of course, you know, from an appearance standpoint, you don't want to see that. Would it matter? Not really. Right. But it's an appearance issue. Right. I think it's interesting kind of, you know, thinking about what we do in our business. And we were an aviation maintenance facility. And we've kind of come into a period now with this concern with uh, the, the virus, the COVID virus. And um, we've, we've had to learn a lot over the last couple of weeks about how to um, address that in, in business aviation. And one of the questions kind of sparked my thought here in terms of, you know, how do we decontaminate or how do we how do we control people going in and out of that even when they're treating the airplane? And and we learn things daily on, on how we're um, doing our process, uh, when we should be changing PPE, um, how we should be um, disposing of the PPE and a lot of stuff. So uh, we really learn, um, you know, through the different conversations that we've had with either Aeroclave or ACA or uh, some of the contractors and, and companies that we've been working with too uh, that are asking us to do this for their fleets as well and the concerns that they have. So um, we're we're learning a whole new uh, industry in, in terms of uh, safety and protection in the aircraft and uh, you know really want to thank everybody that's helped us do that and know that if somebody has some things that says hey you know have you ever thought about this please share those with us because uh, you know our primary goal in learning how to treat aircraft and treating aircraft for, for coming into our facilities and for our customers is really uh, for the protection of our employees and everybody that's right on these airplanes. So um, if you see something here, something that, that you think would be helpful, please share that with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, building on that, you know, we, our emphasis is for our employees first and of course then uh, for our customers' pro uh, property. But Rob, could you kind of talk through just Nate brought up the PPE that you use. Mm -hmm. um, we feel good, pretty good about that process of not only um, protecting you, but then in turn uh, pr protecting the uh, disinfected aircraft. So just talk briefly with you that the two point process. There. Yeah, absolutely. So if you'd have told me back in October that I would be doing dry runs on donning and doffing PPE for a, a pandemic, I don't think I would have believed you. Uh, <laughs> so I never thought I'd kind of see this point, but so we, we did some special training with our uh, our safety team on the right way to put on and take off PPE. Uh, we did some research on some different types of booties. We tried out a few different suits. We tried different goggles in conjunction with respirators along with P95 masks and that kind of thing. And so I think we've kind of settled on a real good process of perhaps overly cautious in a good way. Um, you know, we really take it to the next level to ensure our safety. And I, I don't have any qualms with stepping into an airplane with the PPE or using and, and, you know, feel bad about potentially exposing myself whatsoever. And part of that is you're protected. We go into a potentially contaminated aircraft. We place the unit. We go back, we go back outside, start the unit. We then change our, our uh, protection because of uh, you could have potentially touched something. And then we go in for the final 
uh, removal and wipe down. Right. So we've got the double glove. We've got, you know, when you're in that aircraft setting everything up, obviously you don't want to be reusing that PPE um, back in the same airplane that you just disinfected. Correct. There was a question on the uh, vital oxide usage on the RDS 3110 machine, and it has a one gallon reservoir in it. And uh, I would estimate you could probably get uh, a complete disinfection on a Challenger size aircraft. You could probably get about eight uh, complete fogging events with, with uh, the one gallon that's in the machine. There, there was also a comment on uh, the sm small aircraft operator. One thing that I, one thing we have learned uh, was, regardless of what disinfection method you select, read the instructions on the product. Um, many of the sprays have a 10-minute dwell <coughs> time, meaning that they need to be the surface needs to be wet before it will effectively uh, kill the virus. Even some of the intermediate grade hospital um, wipes also require two, three, four minutes to be effective. So if the sur if it's not left on the surface and you're just applying the product and wiping it off, you're likely uh, more likely to push around the contaminants than actually disinfecting it. Martin, is there an advantage to using the Aeroclave machine in the sense that when you've got this mist or this fog lingering in the air, does it require any less solution to actually be on the surface? because you've got that extra moisture in the air, keeping it from drying out too quickly. Um, I'm not sure I un understand the question. You mean, is there an advantage to fogging versus using the hand applicator Cur or? Versus a spray that you directly spray onto a surface. Oh, oh I see. Uh, well, yeah, so the, so the difference is, um, you know, kind of rewinding to, to when we first started putting the, uh, the system together and calibrating the system and the time and the, the ejection periods and things of that nature. Um, we wanted to find a solution that uh, would enable us or enable the user uh, to uh, dial in the exact amount of uh, the precise amount of, of fluid needed to um, decontaminate, but without soaking. So, uh, going back to the way you know we started uh, with with the, the medical field and and ambulances and things of that nature, and they weren't particularly interested in the solution where you had to go in yet and wipe everything down again. Um, so there's a lot of uh, and the other advantage to that is not just uh, you know uh, the the manpower involved in doing that, uh, but the materials concerns and, and many of those have been voiced here today. So you talk about the leathers and all these things that are very expensive. Well, if you have a dialed in process that is is uh, is designed to uh, specifically apply the amount for you know solid and, and slightly porous surfaces um, without over applying, then you certainly reduce the risk of uh, of penetrating and leaving some trace evidence of having been decontaminated in the past. Um, so so the, the fogging mechanism and 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 and, and, and injecting that fog within the space completely um, not only has that benefit, but also you get into every single nook and cranny. Um, going a bit into the weeds, um, the, the particulates that are uh, injected from the system range between 6 and 20 microns. Um, so if you ever, see, and, and you guys who have seen it, it's, it's actually quite uh, quite interesting how long the particulates linger in the air and, and float around and, and really stay stay airborne until they, they're giving some some uh, uh, route to, uh, to exit the space. Um, so, so that you know, being able to to create the that size um, has the benefits of uh, not only uh, you know uh, focusing on decontaminating the solid surfaces, um, but also gets into every nook and cranny. So that those are generally the advantages of fogging versus uh, the hand spray applicator. And, and we had a question on how long you uh, run the machine inside the aircraft, and I'll, I'll use the Challenger as a reference. So, uh, probably our calculations obviously are based on cubic feet, and it is probably a Challenger size, uh, what size? Uh, like a 604, 605, 601, all have the same uh, similar fuselage. So we're talking an eight minute injection time. And then obviously, you have a 10 minute dwell time, and then obviously, the aer aeration phase to let it disperse. Hey, Nate, it's Vince. If you don't mind, I'd like to jump in again. There was a question or two about um, uh, any kind of odor with the ACA unit. 
the ACA unit actually creates a fresh air smell. As I mentioned, it cleans air the same way as nature does by a higher concentration of ions. So uh, the only odor, if you want to call it that, is a, is a fresh air. And uh, I would also say that with the aviation, uh, sorry, with the ACA um, uh, ground unit, you also get the same level of cleaning as you would with, with the air unit as well. Uh, and then there was another question. I think I answered that already about, um, uh, um, yeah, there it is. Okay, does it give the weird ozone smell? And the answer is, uh, as a function of not generating. Sounds like we might have lost Vince there. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can now. Thanks. Yeah. So I'm not sure how much of that uh, you guys got, but... Um, I was just answering about the uh, questions about uh, a smell associated with ACA and ACA as a function of creating fresh air the way nature does creates a fresh air smell. Yeah, I think we got most of the things, Vince. Okay, thank you. There was a, a question about treatment coming in and, and we've said it a couple of times. We are um, treating aircraft, all the aircraft that come into any one of our facilities. And um, we are uh, letting the customer decide and evaluate whether or not they want that treatment um, at delivery. Um, we certainly can do that at delivery. One of the things that, um, you know, part of this is maintaining a um, virus-free environment here at, at our facilities in Duncan. And um, so it's gonna be completely up to the operator whether or not they want that treatment done at delivery. There was a question regarding uh, uh, an owner with a small aircraft with limited resources or equipment, I would think maybe the best advice we could give there would be the vital oxide is available in a spray bottle or can be used out of a spray bottle and works equally well. You follow the similar guidelines, you know, you apply a light mist, allow it to do that 10 minute dwell time and it works real well for a case like that. There's a question on the uh, fogger, whether it works with heat. Uh, the, uh, the fog that comes out of the nozzles is a cool fog. There is, there is no, I don't believe, there's no heat source in the machine. That, that's correct. So uh, there's a question that came up about the CDC, and um, maybe we kind of talk about, again, I think we talked a little bit about the EPA and, and the chemicals being listed on the... Uh, on the end list, um, and I think uh, uh, Martin, maybe you could talk a little bit about some of the stuff that you have done with uh, not only the FA but the DOD. Yeah, so um, the we have at Aeroclave two uh, two sides of the house. Um, we have a military division which does uh, is currently working on some contracts for uh, large aircraft, whole aircraft decontamination. Um, and then we have uh, what we do on the uh, um, on the commercial side. We, we consider the 3110 a, a commercial system. The uh, the F, we've worked. The, the organization has worked with the FAA and DOD on the large aircraft decontamination uh, projects. Um, hand in hand, it's it's considered by the military kind of a high stakes um, area and. Um, yeah, so so certainly they're aware of it. Um, the FAA, if you, um, it's kind of interesting. We we shared this document with Duncan. Um, they actually withdrew the, any guidance they had a few years ago uh, regarding uh, aircraft decontamination, and they left a small paragraph essentially stating that they withdrew their guidance, but that there are commercial uh, uh, solutions for uh, uh, aircraft decontamination. They specifically mentioned aeroclave. Um, and they also mentioned JBADS, which happens to be the project that we're engaged on, engaged with uh, with uh, the uh, uh, DOD at this point. Um, but yeah, so uh, so we certainly have our, our contacts and interactions with FAA and DOD. And then on the DOD side, we have a lot of uh, uh, bases individually. Uh, we don't have a blanket involvement with, say, the Air Force. 
um, but there are individual bases that, that do use the, um, uh, the system for various applications, including aircraft, interiors, and um, uh, the, the Army, the Navy, and, and virtually all the branches. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. And um, there was a question up here too that you'd probably be best to answer regarding how this system compares to other fogging systems that um, claim that there's a 30, 60, 90 day um, effectivity um, time frame to them. How, how, do, how does Aeroclave compare to that? Right. And so uh, with Aeroclave, there is no um, residual benefit to the application. Um, now, I, I, you know, certainly there are products out there designed. Um, to leave and to to uh, to leave a, a, a residue uh, which has a um, you know a post treatment uh, residual uh, kill kill capability. The problem with those is that at least from our perspective, and I'm not you know kicking dirt on any of those processes. There's a time and place for everything, but Aeroclave is designed to be a proactive uh, frontline, uh, immediately deployed. Uh, uh, process that um, you don't have to be overly concerned with safety protocols or materials compatibility or or carcinogenic effects or, or any of these things. Um, and so some of these others, um, you would almost surely, given the fact that they have residual benefits, would leave some level of, uh, of re re residue, um, which would have to remain in order to, to provide some post-treatment activity. Um, and, and many of these do have um, some level of toxicity associated with them. Um, so but neither of which is something that Aeroclave is interested in doing, although certainly there is a time and place for all of these products. Great. Thank you for that. And uh, Martin, you can back me up on this. And as I understand it, the, the being an EPA registered product, they do the actual testing and then it uh, gets uh, on the uh, the other or the CNC, CDC does the testing, and then the EPA puts it on their list. Is that accurate? Uh, yeah, yeah, more or less. So you guys can imagine that the process is very bureaucratic. Um, but I'll tell you a, a good example, and I've had this question a lot uh, from from all, all industries. Uh, so, so they asked me, you know, uh, have you, has I see vinyl oxide is on the list, but you know, tell us about the testing. There, there is no organization or product out there that has specifically been tested and quote unquote certified by CDC or, or EPA for uh, efficacy against uh, uh, COVID um, or uh, say Ebola, you know, which was kind of the last uh, um, viral outbreak that, that, that we had globally. Um, what, what happens is that um, there are certain guidelines that these uh, chemical manufacturers are aware of and under emergency circumstances, they can make certain claims. And they are governed by certain guidelines that are disseminated by, by the CDC and the EPA. So even prior to ever being approved, and likely none of these products will ever be specifically approved for, say, Ebola. I mean, it's very virulent. It's not like they're going to be handing out samples of Ebola to these individual uh, chemical companies. But there is a, an academic review of the various, you know, chemical components, the efficacy against, um, you know, these, these uh, pathogens. And then based on the guidelines that are put together by the industry and the regulators, uh, they're able to uh, make certain representations under the, you know, the confines of the, of, of the discussion and um, whatever is permissible by uh, the CDC and EPA. Um, so that's kind of a mouthful and in practice, worse than the way I just explained it. Great. Now there's a question from Michael regarding how easy is the cabin prepping before using this equipment and process? Uh, with regards to the aeroclave, you know, the cabin prepping is really quite simple. It's a matter of making sure all your doors and drawers are open to allow the vital oxide to fog into those compartments. Um, you know, we raise our headrests, we position the armrests, and we pull the chairs a little bit away from the sidewall. Um, it really takes about 15 minutes to kind of go through and prep the cabin prior to to the injection stage. As uh, Nate, I saw another question on there about the efficacy uh, against uh, or has 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 UV light been considered 
And I will tell you that we hear that question a lot. And uh, the downside of UV light is it's, it's line of sight. And so uh, UV light has its place. A lot of aircraft water filters or cleaning systems uh, you'll find use UV light and run water through a tube and UV light through that. But, but as far as UV lights, uh, efficacy in a multi-surfaced environment such as an aircraft cabin, um, the answer is it just isn't effective because it is line of sight. Um, and then you talked a little bit about uh, prep for um, you know in using different uh, systems or different uh, cleaning methodologies. And of course, as I mentioned earlier with ACA, if you have the airborne, um, uh, the, the, the aircraft side uh, installed, then there is nothing to do. It's just always cleaning. And the ACA ground units are basically fans that blow the ions throughout the cabin in a ground-based environment. So, so um, the prep there is, is very, very minimal. Uh, what is the chemical that is sprayed from the aeroclave? That is a product called vital oxide. That is actually a brand name. It, it is a brand name. The, uh, the company that uh, produces vital oxide is called Vital Solutions, and they are located in South Florida. If you, if you go out and do a search of uh, vital oxide or vital solutions, um, you can get you can find a lot of good uh, technical information, uh, the chemical MSDS, uh, various um, yeah, just, just some temp some technical information. Of course, I'm happy to uh, provide any additional information that you you can't find or or anything that is available on the vital oxide site. Yeah, I was just one, one final thing here before I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, I appreciate everybody coming and, and spending some time this afternoon to uh, listen to uh, what we've got going on for disinfection. And I think Martin said it earlier, um, you know, we're, we're showing uh, a frontline solution that is uh, there to go and attack it right away and, and be that frontline and also long-term solution. So I think you know, it was interesting listening to all the the uh, comments and, and, and the questions that came in about both systems. So um, I really hope everybody got a little bit out of this. And again, um, keep the questions coming. We'd love to answer them. And any comments uh, that you can share with us, we'd really appreciate it. Perfect. Thank you, Nate, for finishing off finishing this off there. Um, one couple of things before we finish real quick, folks. Um, first of all, we are once again really sorry about the video there and you'll actually be if you stay on this uh, URL here you'll be redirected to the video um, once this is this webinar is complete um, and then also we'd like to thank Martin and Vince for coming here and uh, joining us today thank you Martin thank you Vince that was great thanks for having us yep thanks for having us on we appreciate it absolutely and um, we also have a series of podcasts that we have rolled out um, called our Straight Talk podcast. And you can listen to those just about anywhere you can uh, listen to podcasts. And we have released two podcasts regarding um, Duncan Aviation's efforts towards the COVID-19 outbreak. And then another comment I'd have as well, uh, any technical questions, once again, please get that out to uh, our email at aircraftdisinfection at duncanaviation.com. And lastly, it's pretty hard to do a webinar if we don't have listeners. So we really appreciate you listening to this webinar. We take this very seriously, and we know you do as well. And um, we are here to help you in any way we can. And uh, that is all we have today, folks. Once again, thanks again for uh, joining us. And please stay uh, safe and stay healthy. Thank you.